Once you've got your soil water mixture from doing the pH and the nitrate test, you can use that same water to do the E. coli test. You'll need a sterile pipette, which you can also get from your county office, or just a clean medicine dropper. And you need one milliliter of liquid, which in this pipette is just the stem. It's a very small amount of liquid. You're going to draw it up into the pipette, lift the plate, the cover of the plate, and then slowly squirt it onto the plate, roll the cover slip down, and then gradually tip it to make a nice even sample. In a few minutes this will gel up and then you need to wait between two and three days uh, for this to develop because E. coli is a bacteria and what we're looking for are colonies of bacteria that are the E. coli. Some plates that I've already developed from samples at home will demonstrate the color differences. With these plates, if you have pink dots, that's just normal soil bacteria, and that's okay. I wouldn't want that in my uh, drinking water, but for soil sample, this is very normal. What you don't want is, are the blue dots. If you have blue dots, that's, each one of those is an E. coli bacteria that grew into a colony. Uh, that means that you have contamination in your soil, and splash from the soil could get on your salad greens or your other vegetables or your root crops and potentially be harmful. So this would not be good for spinach. Uh, the longer soil sits, the more of these will, will die away. So if it's springtime and you have E. coli and you're planting tomatoes, by the time the tomatoes are ripe, you should be fine. UV light, the sunlight, and uh, drying out the soil will kill these bacteria. But if you're growing spinach, salad crops, you know, bean sprouts, things like that. This is a nice test to, to do at home to, to just check and see what's going on with your garden. For more information, visit your local Extension office or visit our website at kansasgreenyards.org.